this is a case where a 92 year old male who had one eye with a macular degeneration and this was the only working eye had 32 diopters of a hydrophilic oil which had gone totally away. So we decided to use this oil cutter which is fitted on a ultrasonic tip. Now let us see how we load this cutter onto the phaco tip. The sleeve of the phaco tip usually comes till the cutting edge of the cutter. Once you tighten the cutter onto your phaco tip, slide the phaco tip slowly. Make sure that the holes are perpendicular to the cutting flanges angle. And once the tip is loaded, expose the tip till the cutting edge of the phaco tip. And then use the holes of the irrigation parallelly to the cutting edges. I find this particularly useful because it pushes the fluid behind the eye well and keeps the posterior capsule pushed back and saves you from creating a posterior capsular rupture. So this is a tip which I would give all the beginner users. Keep the two holes differently at the angle of the flanges. Also, you have noticed that I have rotated the microscope at an angle because in the slit lamp in the OPD, I could not actually ascertain the the orientation of the haptics only after putting some intracranial uh, cranial phenocane I appreciated the edges otherwise this was not a very well dilated pupil in the OPD. So I have now realigned my position so that I can have access to the haptics easily. Now I use a combination of methyl cellulose and sodium ionate. I coat the endothelium with methyl cellulose and I coat the second part creating a soft shell by using sodium, sodium ironate. I specifically use sodium ironate behind the eye well to keep the posterior capsule pushed back. Now I actually push back using a blunt instrument first of all to identify the leading haptic that does it have any additions, is it caught behind the capsule or is it free and to my relief I find this particular haptic to be free. So I use more viscoelastic pushing the eye well slightly backwards. Now we will actually evaluate that what is the position of the haptic. Now I push back the iris again to evaluate yes and I find this haptic to be free. So this is a big sense of relief for me that one of the haptics which is the leading haptic of the eye well is free and not caught within the capsule so there is no fibrosis there. But I also noticed that the other opposite haptic or the trailing haptic is not moving at all. So I try and get it out of the bag but to my surprise I am seeing that the haptic is able to come approximately half to be extruded but the other half seems to be stuck to the capsular bag. So I push in more viscoelastic now and I decide to change my approach and go from the main mood and try and get the eye well out of the bag. Now I will push in more viscoelastic. Now you will notice a very very copious use of methyl cellulose and sodium halonate combination to keep the anterior chamber distended, protect the endothelium and the posterior capsule. Now I will make one more attempt to try and plug out the eye well but I see it's pulling the whole capsular bag. There you will see it's pulling the whole capsular bag with it. So I actually decide that probably it is not going to be worth it. And now is the time to demonstrate the use of the eye well cutter. Now I plan to actually cut the haptic away from the main optic of the lens. It is a 32 diopter of an eye well. Now I will again just slightly try and rotate and see if I can push the eye well back in place so that it is now aligned to my cutting axis. Pushing viscoelastic. Now I push viscoelastic which is sodium ionate behind the eye well and you will notice that the eye well is lifted up. This creates enough space between the eye well and the posterior capsule. Now I use a 23 gauge grasping forces which is provided along with the eye well cutter itself. You will notice that the insertion of this particular phaco cutter is not so easy. Once you grasp the eye well, the trick is to keep pulling the eye well towards the cutter while you push the phaco foot switch. I am using a 40 power here and you see that the 
cutter has actually cut the haptic haptic junction very very easily so the trick being getting the cutter fixed in place capturing the eye in its teeth and pulling your left hand towards the cutter while only slightly extending the cutter forward this keeps you away from the endothelium and the posterior capsule now i have actually cut the haptic away you need to be very careful that the cut edges of the eye are very sharp they can damage the endothelium and also cut the posterior capsule now the second step of cutting the eye well into two pieces now again i push a visco elastic behind the eye well which is sodium alloy endothelium coating the uh, coated by visco elastic which is methyl cellulose i align the eye well in a straight axis how i want to cut it now at this stage since i have already encountered difficulty for insertion of the cutter with the sleeve i will slightly enlarge the wound because this will ease the insertion of my vapor tip cutter with the sleeve and also i have to expand the lens cut pieces i would probably need slightly larger wound so i enlarge the wound to approximately 3.5 mm now notice my left hand my left hand will go and grasp the eye well while the cutter engages the eye well surface and see my left hand will keep leaving grasping regrasping grasping regrasping the eye well every time i proceed on there you will notice you can see the cutter going through i am having some problem while cutting so i asked my only technician to increase the tip of power to 60 and you can notice the left hand is pulling the eye well towards the cutter while the cutter is only slightly being inserted into the eye and you can see the eye well is being cut and who notice the left hand which is pulling the eye well towards the cutter there it is now i have finally think that i have been able to cut the lens here i have still visco elastic again now i want to actually assert that did i actually cut the lens or not and to my surprise the lens being so thick i could only create a partial cut in the lens especially in the terminal part of the cut so i again proceed to push the visco elastic or the endothelium push some sodium alloy behind the eye well and now again we grasp the eye well with the end grasping forceps and i use the ilm pulling forceps taken or borrowed from my retina police to actually see if i could actually tear the lens and pull it out but no the lens is very tough and rigid it did not break but tear so i decide i will have to cut it again in the same manner so now i will enlarge the wound as now i have to pull out the pieces anyway i will need a slighter larger wound and this also makes my insertion of the cutting a tip along with the steel a bit easier now i use the same maneuver of engaging the eye well the left hand pulling the eye well towards the cutter you need to be very careful when you do this step you can hit the endothelium near the angles because that's where the cornea is sloping downwards so you should be very very careful when you go in this particular zone because when you go there you can actually hit the endothelium or you can actually hit the posterior capsule or the iris or beautifully the lens has been cut but the job is not over these cut iris pieces are very very sharp and they can damage the endothelium and they can also cause the posterior capsule opening so i again use the end grasping forceps which is provided along with the cutter does the job very well I use the handshake technique to pull out this uh, cutted piece outside. You could actually also make this cutted cut into three pieces, and you would not need to extend it. But I did not want to do more trauma to the patient as it is the patient or the one-eyed patient. So I extended the wound, and the eye well has come out beautifully, half pieces out. The next piece also will be brought out by pulling out with the forceps. and all we need to do is now use the endothelium forceps to remove the remaining part or you will notice that the small cut flange part of the haptic which was cut from the optic is still lying in the capsular bag but it is not going to bother us 
Now I proceed to use the three-piece higher oil which I'll be implanting in the sulcus. This is an oral lab lens and I have many videos in my channel where you can see actually how to use this particular injector and how to utilize it to your best advantage. Now the trick here with this particular cartridge injector is the way I use it is I just insert the cartridge facing left side and I push the haptic and make sure that the haptic goes behind the iris and on top of the anterior capsule. You will notice the left tilt of my FACO tip and as the haptic is coming out, I thread the haptic just behind the IOL using my left instrument as a guide and as the haptic is opening up, my cartridge will straighten up and get the IOL open nicely and smooth. I coat the endothelium is elastic again. Once the IOL has opened up, all you need to do is dial it with a blunt instrument or you can also use a Macpherson's to dial it in place and there we are. The IOL is in place. Now we will probably instill some myotic to constrict the pupil. If you like my surgical videos, do share with your friends and colleagues. I am putting some myotic here and you can see the pupil slowly close down. That actually signals the end of the surgery for us. I will instill some slight amount of viscoelastic before I proceed to do my suturing of the wound because since it's a people 5 mm wound, I don't want to take chances. I would just suture it in between, maybe half of approximately 1.75 mm inside. Here you see viscoelastic which is being stayed into the anterior chamber. The technique of holding the suture needle is hold the needle from posterior 1 by 3rd and the junction of anterior 2 by 3rd. That way you can go through the wound, both the wounds in one single go and the suturing will become very easy. I will just bypass the suturing details. I embed the suture not into the cornea and there you see a beautiful clear cornea, intact posterior capsule. We proceed to do a bi-manual irrigation of removal of the viscoelastic. Please remember to push the IOL once or twice backwards because there could be some retained sodium alunate behind the IOL which may not come out very easily, hydrate your wounds and you are ready to go. So I hope you like the video. Thank you.